Hi, this is Melissa Muir again. One of the things that comes up occasionally as I'm teaching classes or in the case of today I had some online friends asking about making ear wires and making them so that they are the same. They talked a little bit about buying a jig and I had mentioned that sometimes it might be a little easier to uh, make your own ear wires and again the conversation turned to the fact that they weren't quite so certain they could get them to match each other. So today I'm just going to show you really quickly a couple of designs that I do and how I make my ear wires match. Some of the tools that I use and all of them are not necessary but I have them so I use them and I'll kind of explain a little bit of uh, other tools that you might be able to use as well. But I have a couple sets of bail making pliers and these are just pliers that have uh, two different sizes of of tangs are, are the nose on them rather I guess. Um, they're both different sizes but they're straight they're not tapered like you would find in a round nose pliers. I actually have four different pairs of of bail making pliers so I have a whole ton of different sizes. Other things that I'm going to need a good pair of cutters, round nose pliers, flat nose, and chain nose pliers. I also need to have a sharpie for some of these and then to remove that sharpie I have a q-tip and just regular old rubbing alcohol. Uh, I'm going to show you three different pairs so I've prepared a couple of different ear wires here. Uh, two of them are two inches long and I've balled up the ends on one of the uh, sets of ear wires and the other set is three inches long won't use all of that, I'll still cut off some of that, but it's better to start with too much material rather than too little. And finally I have my steel block, a small hammer. The hammer that I use, I love this hammer, I use it a lot for uh, when I do rivets and hardening wire and things like that. The ends on it, you can see both of them are just slightly rounded. So it's a great tool. I have quite a few of these if anybody's ever interested in purchasing those. A really inexpensive hammer, like $11, $11, $12, I guess, something like that. And then finally, a ruler. So the first one I want to show you is just a very, very simple ear wire with the bald ends of my sterling silver wire. I'm using 20 gauge. Now, you can use other gauges, however, things get a little bit uncomfortable when you get to using more than 20 or 19 gauge. I currently have dead soft wire. I always buy dead soft because I figure I can always harden my wire. I can also anneal my wire since I have those capabilities. Not everybody does and then once you anneal it then you have to go through the process of pickling it, polishing it back up. So I just always buy dead soft and then I harden as I need to. So for this pair of ear, ear, ear wires, I'm just going to use my round nose pliers, a sharpie marker, and that's pretty much it And until I get ready to harden those up with the hammer and the steel block. What I like to do is I will take my ear wire, this is the one that has the bald end, and I put it at the very tip of my pliers, and I'm down maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less than that, so not very far down into the pliers. I want to put the hook where I might hang any dangles or beads, wrapped head pin type of, of uh, embellishments onto my ear wire. And so what I do here is I just bring this around. Now it's important to notice where I'm holding this wire. I'm holding it very very close to the pliers um, and this way if I because if I were to hold it out here things are going to be very very loose. I want to create a very controlled tight loop and the way to do that is hold it close to the pliers as you wrap around. The other thing I don't do, you'll see that I have not yet completed the circle here or the loop is I don't try to do it all in one movement. A lot of times that creates um, fatigue on your arms, plus it just puts your arms and your wrists in unnatural positions. So go ahead, gently maneuver your pliers back to where you're pinching, like the top and the bottom of that loop, or you know, on the inside of that. And then I continue, put this back over here so you can see it, continue to push this back around until it comes back in and it touches itself. At that point I should have just a nice little loop here. Now I want to make certain that I get that the same 
for the next ear wire. So what I like to do is I'll put this back onto my pliers, hold them into place, take my Sharpie, and I will mark my pliers just with a Sharpie, just on the top of where that, uh, that loop ends. And so now you can see I've got that little bit of a mark right there on my, my pliers. So from here, I can pick up the next one, line it back up also with that mark on my pliers, and once again, come in, wrap, line it up, wrap it around, so that I now have two little loops or hooks that match up. Okay, and at this point, they should be the same size. So for the final thing that I like to do, and this is where I really like to use the bail making pliers because they're not tapered. One of the things you can do is you can take both of these wires, hook them into your round nose pliers, and go ahead and create the ear hoop or the ear loop there. But like I said, I have a tapered pair of pliers. So the same type of thing is going to apply here. I'm going to go ahead and come in, and this is where I kind of fudge it. You know, I play around a little bit with where do I put it here towards the loop itself or do I put it here towards the back of that ear wire. Um, I do like to work at the very base of my round nose pliers. It's where I have the widest section. If you have a very narrow pair of pliers, you may want to uh, use maybe a wooden dowel, a pen, a pencil, a sharpie, something else that uh, is going to make it so that your loop here is big enough. But at that point, what I do is I will start to bend this around. Now, this is where I really kind of start to fudge with things. I don't necessarily bring one end all the way around to meet the other. I will go ahead and play with both sides and bring them both together. And what that allows me to do is get a really nice curve on both sides of my ear wire. So the next thing I would do, again, I can take my Sharpie, put my ear wire back on here, but I don't need to because I know that I'm already at the very end of my pliers. So in this case, I don't really have to mark where it is. And I can just come back in here, again, line it up here at the very base of my pliers. And this one I will go ahead and put back onto my pliers because I want to get these loops matched up as much as possible. Um, that's where it gets more important. So again, I'm going to go ahead, it helps if I kind of show you what I'm doing here, uh, bring this back around, and once more I'm going to bring that looped part back in so that they both touch the wires here. Pull these off, and I should now have two matching ear wires. You can see that there. So they're pretty close to each other at this point. For a final thing that I do, I will come in and line up my hoops here. Uh, easier said than done sometimes. And I'm going to trim any areas that need to uh, be trimmed that might be too long. And finally, I'll take my flat nose pliers and just at the very, very end of these, give them just a little bit of a bend and that kind of helps a little bit to guide that ear wire into the ear. So there's our first pair of ear wires. Let's see if I can hold these up here so you can see them a little better. Not too easy here. But there's our first pair.